your sheet, but just in case I forget anyway. Uh, I'll include it when I motion approval of the agenda, okay, Lisa? Oh, perfect. That's thank you, Sid. Thanks, Sid. Easily okay. done. All right, and look at that, it's six o'clock. So, well, good evening and welcome to the Monday, August 30th meeting of the Green Bay Planning Commission um, via Zoom. And we will do a roll call. Chair Lisa Hansen, present. Vice Chair Jacob Miller. Present. Alder Veronica corpus -Dax. She's been excused from the meeting. Oh, she has. Okay, I didn't see that on there. Okay. Um, Commissioner Sydney Bremer. Present. Commissioner Darius Daniels. Present. Uh, Commissioner Linsmeyer is excused. And Commissioner Ken Ravinsky. Present. Okay. Moving on to the approval of the agenda for the August 30th meeting of the Green Bay Plan Commission. I move approval of the agenda with the exception of moving items five and six up before items one and two. Second. It's a motion by Commissioner Bremer, second by Commissioner Ravinsky. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And that is approved. Moving on to the approval of minutes from the August 9th, 2021 meeting of the Green Bay Plan Commission. I move to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bremer, second by Commissioner Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, and then moving on to regular business, we will be starting with item number five which is a public hearing. This public hearing has been properly posted and public notification has been published in the Green Bay Press Gazette. The Plan Commission is interested in hearing public comments on the subject agenda items. We invite your comments and ask that after your name has been called, you state your address, whether you represent a group or association, whether you favor, oppose, or are only providing information in this matter, and your comments or concerns. We also ask that you confine your testimony to facts related to the proposal at hand and avoid repetitive testimony. You must be recognized by the Plan Commission in order to speak, and please address your comments to the chair. Comments will be limited to three minutes. And if staff give us a brief overview before we move on to the public hearing. Yes, um, so just to give you an idea of the location, this is near the corner of Fisk and Shano Avenue. This is the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, we're viewing this more as a cleanup. It was from the petitioner, um, but is going from residential to our public institutional, so that would be more conforming with their land use. Okay, sounds good. So we're looking to hear from interested parties who are in favor of this proposition. Are there any? Is there anyone looking to speak in opposition to this item? And is there anyone wishing to provide information only for this public hearing portion of this item? Is there anyone wishing to speak? Is there anyone wishing to speak? Is there anyone wishing to speak? I'm sorry, I missed the first part of it. So I live on the other side of the trail. So if what you could just, I'm sorry, if you could just state your name and address for the record, please. Sure, it's Heather Nita and it's 1437 Dowson Street. Okay. Um, so exactly what that would that entail? Is that like the church, would it be closer to my house? Like it's not doing anything with the trail or anything like that? Or I don't, I guess I don't understand exactly what it's looking to do besides change from um, residential to business. And Heather, we'll actually get into more of the details of it um, on the regular agenda item, but actually um, 
this is just talking about zoning. Nothing, uh, to my understanding, nothing is moving. It's just a cleanup because the zoning is improper. But um, with the actionable item, which is that item number six, we'll have more discussion and more questions at that point. This is really just for public input at this point. So if you have any information that you want to state or anything, any statements, then that's what we're looking for at this time. But we really can't take any questions. OK. Anything else you wish to state? You're just kind of looking for more information on it? Right, yeah, I was just looking on more information on exactly what it was going to do or if it was gonna be closer to my house or what was going on. That's what I was looking for. Okay, all right, and we'll, and when we get to the actionable item, if you have questions that are, we ask them at that time as well. Because right. we, generally we it up to the public. Thanks, Heather. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Let the record reflect that no one came forward and this public hearing is now closed. And moving on to the corresponding actionable item, item number six, consideration with possible action on the request to rezone 1414 and 1424 Shano Avenue from low density residential district to public institutional submitted by Jeffrey Desjardins, seven day Adventist, Wisconsin Association property owner. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so again, this is the location of the request on the city's west side. Um, you'll notice that there is also another church um, located here. This is not part of the request currently, though staff may bring a separate request forward in the future for something similar. Um, to get an idea of the view of the property, here is the subject property, and then again, that additional church that may come forward in the future. Is this switching? Is this changing to the different maps for you? This one is, yeah, it took a little, a little bit away, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I can, like, kind of see it on my second screen, so I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, this is our future land use map. So as reflected here, um, the blue is for that public institutional or semi-public uses. Um, so this is in accordance with that. Currently our zoning shows this entire area as zoned for R1 low density residential. Um, so with that, the change would allow them to go from in the R1 district, um, church and educational uses are allowed through conditional use permits. If we go forward with the public institutional zoning, they're allowed by right. Um, so this is easier for uh, many people when they do any sort of financing, the conditional use can be a hindrance. And then also just kind of cleans up and gives a better idea of what the property is being used for. Um, there are no proposed changes at this time. We don't have any site plans or any expansions proposed currently, um, but this would allow for them to take out that one step of the conditional use permit if they did wanna do any expansion of their existing uses, which is church and educational. Um, so with that, we are requiring um, recommending approval of the request. Does any from the commission have any questions for staff? So just to clarify, it would make the zoning fit what is on the ground? Yes. So there are actual changes in real life other than the zoning map getting updated to reflect the land use more appropriately. Thank you, Steph. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Alder Stoyer. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I talked to Mr. DeJardin about this as well. Um, I also have had no citizens come forward to talk to me about any concerns about this. I look at it as a clerical setup, you know, trying to clean some things up here. Uh, if you go by that area, I go on that trail constantly, and the area near the trail is pretty wide open. Uh, it, I don't see it being any kind of hindrance to the trail or even to the houses around it. Pretty wide open area. If they expand, or there'll be maybe some areas in the future, but for now, looking at the grounds, it's pretty uh, pretty laid back in that sense. I don't I don't have a big problem with it. I I concur that we should change it. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Sawyer. Um. Could we pull the map up again uh, for the future land use? Uh, 
There you go. I guess, so my question, it looks like the re or the future land use divides that property. Would this, like the entire property would be zoned um, PI or? Yes, the rezoning request is for the entire parcel. Um, I don't know if you guys are all familiar with this, but a lot of our comp plan stuff are blobs, especially as you get towards the east side. Um, so we take the general intent of the comprehensive plan map. And with this, this is showing almost all of the parcels. So we would recommend zoning the entire parcel. Thank you. Uh, with that, I, I would move to approve. I wonder if we have answered Heather's questions and I'd like to open the floor to make sure that that has been done on the floor. I would second that. Thank you. Motion by Commissioner Bremer, second by Commissioner Ravinsky to open the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and then I guess, uh, Heather, if it, did that answer your question? Sure, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's good, okay. yeah. Sorry, good. We opened the floor <laughs> to make sure that you were okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, is there anyone else wishing to speak on this item? Or I guess, do we have any questions for the applicant? Again. Then I move to return to regular order of business. Second. All right, motion by Commissioner Bremer, second by Commissioner Ravinsky to move to regular order. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, so we have a motion by Commissioner Ravinsky to approve. I'll second that. And a second by Commissioner Bremer. Any further discussion? All right, hearing none. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and then that moves on unanimously to the next city council meeting, which is uh, uh, September. September 7th, September 7th. 7th, thank you, Alder Stoyer. Thank you, thank you, uh, Commission, for, for this. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> Okay, and then moving uh, back on to item number one, which is a public hearing on the request to rezone the 1420 block of South Huron Road from rural residential to varied density residential and rural residential to conservancy, submitted by John Leroy Mowen Associates on behalf of Paul Kosmowski, property owner. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Can everyone see the screen? Nothing is on it yet, Paul. Except the sign that we're viewing your screen. There. Oh, there. Oh, see it. Sometimes it's a little slow or I'm a little slow, one of the two. Um, <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is a request for rezoning. Uh, the 1420 block of South Huron Road, uh, that is the 30 acre parcel that is at the very southern limits of the city of Green Bay on the west west side of Sun Road. Um, this may look familiar. This item was, well, a similar item was before the plan commission, the comprehensive plan amendment. And what that did was change some future land use designations from uh, uh, business park to medium to high density residential and uh, from wetland public open space to, uh, I'm sorry, um, business park to wetland and public open space. So this is the implementation of that. This is the rezoning of that subject area to be in conformance with that recent comprehensive plan on that. All right, thank you, Paul. So with this public hearing, we're looking to take uh, testimony from parties who are in favor of the item. I'm Steve Beter with my own associates. If you have any questions of me, I'm representing Paul Kosmowski in this rezone. Sure, thank you, Chris. If you could just state your address for the record. My name is Steve. Chris is my wife. Oh, sorry. Security Boulevard, 
Green Bay, Wisconsin. All right. Thank you, Stephen. We'll probably have questions for you during the actionable item, I'm sure. Yep. Thank you. That you'd like to state right now. I'm good. All right. Is there anyone else looking to speak in favor of this item? Is there anyone looking to speak in opposition to this item? And if you're calling in on internet audio, it is star six to unmute yourself. Is there anyone with station only? Is there anyone wishing to speak? Is there anyone wishing to speak? Is there anyone wishing to speak? Let the record reflect that no one came forward and this public hearing is now closed. Moving on to the actionable item, item number two, consideration with possible action on the request to rezone the 1420 block of South Huron Road from rural residential to very density residential and rural residential to conservancy submitted by John Leroy, Mowen Associates, on behalf of Paul Kosmowski, property owner. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is the request to rezone the subject area. Uh, the property that's kind of highlighted with the uh, kind of, uh, I guess, cyan color, there's a 15 acre parcel that's proposed there that would go from rural residential to uh, uh, very density residential or R3. There is a small outlaw to the north, which has power lines. It's actually owned by the city of Green Bay. That's also about four, that's about four acres in size. That would be included within that uh, rezoning request. And there's also a pending developer's agreement as well that would tie that property in. Uh, the piece to the south with the uh, wetlands and wet navigable stream would go from rural residential to conservancy. Um, again, this is the comprehensive plan showing the old recommendations of the business park. Uh, again, we've kind of went over that briefly with the change or recent change that's uh, pending. Um, and the current zoning of the area uh, shows that rural residential, the, this pattern here outline would go to the R3 and this area in the green would go to conservancy. This kind of shows you kind of a future layout or lot layout of the area. And as I think I mentioned last, at the last plan commission meeting, there's, this property is really encumbered by quite a few wetlands here. So the lot lines are kind of set up to allow for some development on future lot one, lot two, and then the out lot down here below. Uh, we did notify affected property owners within 400 feet. We didn't receive any calls or questions regarding this request. And the staff tonight is recommending approval of the request as proposed. All right, thank you, Paul. So, oh, Paul, the one thing that confused me is what you just said. You said future development in the outlot, but the outlaw lot is up for rezoning as conservancy, and wouldn't that preclude future development? It would, sure, but lot one, it's outlot one, so that's an unbuildable area, if you can see that on the map here. Yes. So there are potentially three lots, they haven't been created yet. There's a lot one, a lot two, those are technically considered buildable with upland areas. Outlot one is also part of that future land division, but it's unbuildable because it's designated as an outlot. So really the only one and two are buildable. I wanted to make sure of that. Thank you very much. Sure. I would move to approve. I'll second. We have a motion by Commissioner Ravinsky and a second by Vice Chair Miller. Is there any discussion or questions for staff? I think that there's somebody in the audience with their hand up. Okay. Then I move to open the floor. Uh, second. Motion by Commissioner Bremer and a second by Vice Chair Miller to open the floor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. And if the person wishing to speak, if you could state your name and address for the record. Because I just see a bunch of black screens. I don't see anything. <laughs> I 
I, I don't see anyone. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't, yeah, see, I don't see a hand raised. <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm hallucinating. I'm not sure. <laughs> It's okay. It's best to err on the side of caution. But um, since, since we have the floor open, I wonder, I would like to ask a, a question of Steve Bita. My only concern about this, and I must say I'm impressed by the work that you all have done with the city to pay attention to the wetlands and all the plantings on the campus. Um, my only concern is our ongoing con uh, issues of affordability and housing in the area and the market rate of 900 to 1200 still is going to leave a lot of people out and i noticed that there are a lot of parking stalls here an average of what is it 2.6 parking stalls per unit uh, was any thought given to uh, cutting down particularly the uh, indoor i assume there is some uh, garages in any way that would allow lower prices for some of the units? No, I don't think Paul considered that. Unfortunately, this is what it costs to build these particular buildings. Anything with attached garages to them are much more expensive to build. With the fire sprinklers, they're much more expensive to build. Um, and given the site, it's a bit challenging. Um, and that's why the, you know they didn't quite have their, their numbers. Um, fine-tuned yet I'll call it but I can't I do a lot of apartment stuff and I couldn't tell you the last apartment that I've seen that's new that went up for less than probably eight hundred dollars a month even a one bedroom pretty tough to do right now in these and with these market conditions it's almost impossible to do just because of the prices of lumber yeah, building materials are ridiculous it is. yeah it's not just lumber it's building materials um, so Thank you, I appreciate your response. Were there any other questions for the petitioner? Otherwise I'd entertain a motion to close the floor. Uh, motion to return to normal order. Second. Motion by Vice Chair Miller, second by Commissioner Bremer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, so let me remember, we've got a motion by Commissioner Ravinsky and a second by Vice Chair Miller. Do we have any further discussion on this item? All right, hearing none, I'll go ahead with a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and then that will move along unanimously to City Council for September 7th. Moving on to item number three, which is a public hearing on the request to rezone 215 Elizabeth Street from general commercial to highway commercial and general commercial to low density residential, submitted by Steve Bita, Mauen Associates, on behalf of Mirashimi Incorporated property owner. Uh, thank you. A little background before we open up our public hearing. Um, this parcel is 215 Elizabeth, which is outlined here. Um, this is in conjunction with a parcel that's also here on Main Street. So both will be used um, on their site plan. Um, the comprehensive plan has been before you now twice, um, recently approved in early 2021, that has commercial for the southern half of this property and then residential for the northern part of the property intended to be a very solid buffer between the commercial area and the residential area to the north. Um, so we'll go through the site plan and some of the specifics on the action item. Okay, thank you so much, Steph. And so we're looking to hear from interested parties that are in favor of this item. Any interested parties who are in opposition to this item? And is there anyone wishing to provide information only? Is there anyone wishing to speak? Is there anyone wishing to speak? Is there anyone wishing to speak? 
<laughs> Is there anyone wishing to speak? Let the record reflect that no one came forward and this public hearing is now closed. Moving on to the actionable item, item number four, consideration with possible action on the request to rezone 215 Elizabeth Street from general commercial to highway commercial and general commercial to low density residential submitted by Steve Bita, Mao and Associates on behalf of Mirashimi Incorporated property owner. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So again, we're looking at the property that's located uh, at the intersection of Main Street and Elizabeth. Um, for some reference, um, Bear Creek Trail comes out here and there's a McDonald's at the corner here. Um, this future land use map is not accurate. We have not updated it since our um, last meeting where we uh, updated our comprehensive plan. So it was previously the medium intensity retail office or housing and then we had adopted going to commercial for this portion here and residential for the northern portion again. Currently the zoning reflects that there is C2 zoning on the main street property and a little bit of the 215 Elizabeth with the rest of it being C1 zoning. So the request is to go from the C1 zoning to C2 and then also to R1 residential up north. Um, to display this a little bit better, here's the site plan. They were recently approved for a variance at the Board of Appeals for no um, five foot setback along Elizabeth Street so they could have parking for auto sales right up front. Um, this had went before the plan commission in August of 2020. We had recommended denial. The city council had sent it back for further information. At that point, the applicants and the property owner had gone through a series of neighborhood meetings and had scaled back the site plan quite significantly. So this is a reflection of that scaled back site plan, which is showing a very large buffer area between the residential um, neighbors and then the commercial use here, which would be a used auto sale lot. So there's an existing building here that will be maintained and updated. And then from there, it's just the addition of parking, landscaping, and then this large buffer area with some fencing here. And I believe there is some existing fencing along the rear. Um, I would like to note that there don't, no lights are shown on this site plan. They would have to comply with obviously our lighting and traffic through our site plan review, but no lights are shown currently through the site plan. And a little bit better of a descriptor for what the zoning would be. Um, so this would all be C2 zoning throughout the southern part of this parcel. And then this would be rezoned to R1 to reflect that buffer area that's on their site plan. Um, this is pretty rare for us. We don't typically go for split zoning with any parcel. Um, this is kind of known as a spite strip. It's meant to keep a very large buffer. In this case though, I think it's a, entirely appropriate considering the heavy residential uses to the north. And C2 is a pretty intensive um, zoning district for us. So even if this auto use doesn't go through or gets changed over, C2 does allow for drive-throughs. Um, so just thinking in the future that if this gets sold or rehabbed to a different use, we want to make sure that we're protecting those neighbors to the north as much as we can. So I do find that the R1 spite strip to the north is, is appropriate here. So with that, we are um, recommending approval of the request. We had heard from a couple neighbors, mostly inquiring. We had one that was on the fence about it, mostly concerned about traffic increase. Um, she does live on the road to the north. And I explained that the traffic entry points were both on Elizabeth Street and that seemed to calm some fears. And then also received an email today from somebody who was opposed to the request, um, concerned concern mostly about lighting, concerned that there's gonna be a lot of spillage over here um, but with this type of a buffer zone, there's a 10 foot landscape buffer that's required. And then the lighting cannot exceed one foot candle at any property line. Um, so we believe that through site plan review, a lot of those things will be taken care of. So the zoning does seem appropriate as proposed. Okay, thank you, Steph. Go ahead, Commissioner Bremer. You're on mute. Thank you. There. Um, so I'm. I have no concerns with the buffer lighting, particularly since it's a, a good treescape all the way through here as part of that buffer. My one surprise is there are no sidewalks, right? I think there are existing sidewalks. This was just a site plan for oh, their site. Okay. Um, okay. I, I was... There wouldn't be on Elizabeth, but I can pull it up quickly too. Um, Yep, 
Yes, there are existing sidewalks. Okay, that takes care of my only concern. Thank you. Uh, my question for staff here on the, I have, let's see, the site plan pulled up here, um, or I should say the aerial photo. Is it currently gravel on the entire site and they're gonna be reestablishing grass on the Northern per portion or will that just be planting and leaving the existing conditions? Um, I would ask the applicant for that kind of information. I believe the existing condition is like very, very bad concrete. So it's probably turned into gravel at that point. Um, given what's on the site plan, it shows that it will be grass, seeded and grassed um, with landscaping on it. So whatever is on their site plan is what they'd be adhering to. But I think that if you wanted to open the floor and ask Mr. Bita, he might have a better answer than I have. No, I, I'm good with that. I just, I'm, I'm having a hard time reading the, the site plan, but I got closer to my computer and I see it now. It says remove unused blacktop, uh, reseed with grass. So sorry, I just had to look closer. It is a pretty small site plan. Uh, my other question for staff, I wasn't part of the plan commission when this went through the first time the initial concerns you you don't have any initial like any concerns that were brought up originally uh, it was mainly just so that when that that buffer would be there um yes most of the initial concerns came with over parking of the site uh, multiple access points um, possible expansion of the building that may encroach into like having more lighting available but really it was that it was full parked up to that northern property line. So now that they have a quite extensive um, buffer zone on their site plan, which you know is impressive to look at, but I think really that zoning, that R1 zoning is gonna protect those northern properties in case any redevelopment happens. So that really has polished any of the concerns that any staff members have. All right, thank you. With that, I don't have any other concerns. Lisa, as long as it's not you that's falling over, we're okay with that. Technical difficulties. So I guess it, I see a couple of people, a couple of names in the audience that I don't recognize. I'm just wondering if we, if there are people that want to talk and if we need to open the floor. We just came from a public hearing where no one said anything, so. <laughs> uh, unless there's a concern, I would, I would just move to approve. Uh, we're quickly. Sorry, I know we have a motion on four, but it looks like Georgia uh, Georgina is trying yeah, to speak. I, I see her as well. Sorry. So, but we need to open the floor before we can do that. Right. I, she was trying to speak while you do that. So I guess I'll follow. I, I'll do a see it and ask that we open the floor at this time. <laughs> thank I'll you. second that. All right. Thank you. So motion by Commissioner Daniel, second by Commissioner Brem. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and Georgiana, did you want to speak? If you do, if you could just state your name and address for the record. But you will need to unmute yourself. And if you are on phone, that requires that you press what, Lisa? Star, star six. Star six. She was on video, but... Um, I think we called her out and now she's <laughs> run away. <laughs> is, I guess, is there a public wishing to speak on this item? Hmm. I guess. I wanted, to ask, I wanted to ask Madison if she could unmute her, if she has that power. I. She looked like someone was unmuting her because I saw it unmute and they would mute again, so. Yeah, okay. I'm kind of trying to and I don't think she wants to talk. <laughs> Okay. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I saw the same thing you did, Commissioner Daniels. It looked like she wanted to talk. So um, if she doesn't want to talk, that's okay. We can see her vo uh, her face now. If you want to talk, Georgiana Boehner, and if you could put your thumb up, and we'll make sure you have a chance to. 
No, she's out of here. Okay. <laughs> Good enough. Motion. Did I second? All right, motion by Commissioner Ravinsky, second by Commissioner. <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so we have a motion by Commissioner Ravinsky. Any further discussion? Do we have a second? Not yet. I'll second. Uh, I'll second. Oh. <laughs> and a second. Sid so, so got there first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is there any further discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll go ahead with the voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that moves on unanimously then to the September 7th City Council meeting. And then we've already done five and six, so moving on to number seven, which is consideration with possible action on the review of updates to Article 18, Off-Street Parking, Drives and Loading, Green Bay Municipal Code. Yes. Madam Chair, uh, David Buck is still working on that with Dave Hansen, and uh, he's asked that that be held until the September 27th uh, Planning Commission meeting. Can't wait. <laughs> Motion to hold the item. Second. <laughs> Second by Commissioner Bremer to hold the item until the seventh meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, then that will be held until two meetings from now? Two meetings, yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. All right, and then moving on to informa informational director's report. I saw it. I didn't get to read it, but I saw it. I sneaked in on you guys right before the meeting every time. I know I do that. So, <laughs> do that. so we can't so can ask you any questions about it because we haven't had a chance to read it yet, Neil. But you can always <laughs> ask me anything, Sid. And actually, I said, if there's anything on there that, that is kind of, I try to highlight the certainly the categories of the projects in there. Um, you know, I think most of the items are simply updates, uh, nothing too dramatic. Uh, from anything that was on there before. I did want to point out a couple of new ones that were added from last time. Um, 200 North Monroe, folks remember that project's been approved. Staff is kind of starting to work with them on the phase two environmental that'll be required for that site, uh, just to kind of get that cleared and, and done. Um, so I don't think the, uh, the developer was quite anticipating maybe some of the contamination that was on there, even though we've got had conversations on it, but for whatever reason, they didn't seem to recall everything that was on that site. So uh, what staff is working with them to kind of proceed on the phase two. So that project is still on tr on track. It was just an unexpected, a uh, little bit of extra environmental work that's gonna need to be done uh, in terms of planning for the remediation of that site before they proceed on the project. Um, the important one I think I really wanted to highlight that will eventually be coming to this body uh, is is 216 Military Avenue. This is the former Shopco building. We're working with H.J. Martin on the site there. They have a desire to kind of use a temporary use for some storage in that building. Uh, warehousing is, is not generally allowed in that zoning classification. Uh, so we are meeting with them, actually meeting with them tomorrow uh, and actually trying to figure out a way if there's a way we could do a combination of of a planned unit development plus a development agreement that would ensure that that was just a temporary use on the step to a larger redevelopment of the site. So we feel uh, staff was certainly has, doesn't have a recommendation at this point, but we feel if it is done in the context of a, t you know, a deadline with a future redevelopment of the site, that it would be something we could consider for the site. Uh, but that is obviously subject to a whole lot of uh, different criteria and certainly coming through the RDA first in terms of see if they're interested in, this, in any project on the site. And then obviously to the plan commission and council then for specific zoning action. Uh, so watch for that certainly in the coming months. Uh, we think it is a very, it's a great site. We, I mean, we've talked to at least one developer who has worked and kind of done a projection on the WIDA tax score credits for this site. And it is one of the highest scoring sites in the city. So Sid, Mr. Bremer, fingers crossed. <laughs> if we can maybe forget to get a project here, uh, we think this would be a great site. Uh, so we are going to, staff is in, in discussions with H.J. Uh, Martin at this point on hopefully future use on that site. Let's see if there was anything else under there that was really new and exciting. I'm pretty much just kind of just continuing to plug along on most of those other projects. 
happy to answer any questions uh, if you, either right now or if you have any questions as you do get a read sips, please feel free to certainly shoot me an email. I'll be happy to answer as well. And actually, I just figured out how to be able to read it while we are also on screen oh. for the first time. Excellent. In the <laughs> of time so we've been doing this. So I'm, I'm happy. You're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem. I guys. That's... You guys, I want to go for an ice cream cone. <laughs> Neil, I do got a question on that now that yes, I just, or as you're going through it. Um, has there been, an, I guess, two questions, an inventory of maybe these old big box retail stores in the city? Um, just to kind of know how many we have and, you know, if, if there's going to be options to redevelop them. And has there been anything learned either from this or maybe other cities too on how to some of these old big boxes that are kind of sitting there empty? Yeah, great question, Mr. Miller. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not personally aware of an absolute, like here's a report of here's where they all are. But I know if you talk to Dave Buck and Paul Newmeyer, they, they can bam, 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 and just rattle them straight off and stuff. And they're all, various staffs work on them in various capacities as they go through. Uh, certainly kind of keeping an eye on, uh, certainly from everything from an assessing level and a dark store level on a statewide issue is certainly the one key issue on getting these some of these sites reused. Uh, um, I think staff's position I've, I've been pretty supportive of at this point in terms of, like I said, in this case, you know, really not allowing that temporary use there. I think plan commission probably knows better than anybody. Uh, temporary uses have a sneaky you know, habit of becoming more not so temporary uses <laughs> uh, in terms of as they move forward. Um, you know, we certainly are looking at, you know, there are some unique things going on, I think, in terms of what look at uh, what Garrett Bader has been doing with East Town Mall. Uh, and certainly the commission is probably recalling that one in terms of maintaining the retail front of those buildings and then using the kind of the more industrial user in back but there's no visual you can't tell there's an industrial use back there uh, you know really a kind of a unique approach to those kind of larger larger format buildings um, I think that certainly has some great possibilities on that so there's some lessons to be learned from that and possibly allowing some things in front maybe some additional development in front to screen that building if it was to transfer it into that you know I think long term we probably still see the redevelopment of those sites is probably the avenue we want to see happen on a majority of them uh, I don't think that that sort of uh, creative reuse is always feasible. Um, but again, it takes it takes a pretty, pretty creative developer. Garrett's obviously a guy who certainly fits that bill, uh, was able to really pull it off. And I think do a really viable project that, that looks nice, fits in with the neighborhood and has minimal um, you know, conflicts with the area for what they've done. So certainly, um, you know, taking a look at that as in the comprehensive plan update as we get ready to kind of get launched in that this fall, I think that's probably would be a great uh, specific topic to dial in on as we go through that process and really identify a lot of those large. I mean, the, the temporary use is not a, just a large format building issue. It, we've seen smaller buildings want to do the same thing, just use it for temporary storage kinds of things. But obviously, the biggest ones that certainly catch everyone's eye, I think, are the large format spaces that are vacant. So. Um, so for, for, for now, I think we're, I, I appreciate staff's approach to these. I think we're on the right track on these and trying to, you know, either not allow that, that sort of temporary use, or if we do allow that to be very, very strict on the time frames and ability to end that use when a, when a project would come forward. So, but we're open to other ideas if anybody's got them. <laughs> All right. Do we um Sorry, I did, I did have one question. Can you expand on the Bay Lake Bank building and um, the future use or uh, what, what is the, the pie in the sky vision for that? Yeah, well, the original vision that is adopted actually in the authenticity plan is actually the removal of that building. Um, that's actually what's currently adopted right now is actually taking that building down, extending the one street through there and creating some open space as part of that lot there. Um, for a variety of reasons, there's there's roadblocks, mostly financial ones, uh, in place in terms of what the costs would be to that. I think we've seen um, Bay Lake uh, or Spring Lake Church has expanded in that quite a bit and done some considerable investment in that space. Uh, I think there's been other other tenants that this is a condo building. There are probably I want to say there's 14 or 15 different owners now in that building, so it's not just one owner anymore. Um, so one of the things we've kind of been working with one of the primary owners there, uh, Paul Belster and base companies is trying to figure out 
you know, how do we really evaluate this building going forward? There's been lots of folks who've kind of anecdotally saying, oh, you can't, we can't, there's no way we can add anything, add layers to the building. There's no way we can activate the roof and screen the mechanicals, or it's too expensive, just kind of randomly throwing out some numbers, um, you know, how much demolition would cost. But I haven't seen an actual engineering or architectural report saying, if you're going to knock that building down and get that site back to site ready conditions, this is what it would cost. Here's the detailed cost estimate. So kind of coming up with that, if there's going to be renovations to the inside of the building to a residential use or other use, what exactly would need to be done? What would that cost be? So the intent by kind of having this architectural study done is to really get real numbers in terms of evaluating what those options would be and actually have actual cost estimates done by, by a professional architect or engineer to tell us really how to evaluate those options and what's feasible and what's not. What what can physically be done and then financially what it would, what it would take to get that done. Um, obviously the RDA owns the, the parking lot immediately adjacent to that as well. We've had that out for RFP in the past. So we're, we're actually asking at the same time to maybe do some soil study work and other things on our lot as well that the city owned, the RDA owns at that same time. If we figure if we're going to have a consultant out on site evaluating those things, we should do both the architectural and the kind of maybe the soils work at the same time. Uh, we figure a worst case scenario just gives us more information for when we send it out to RFP and when we can actually provide more accurate data to a perspective uh, a developer looking at the sites. So we're still evaluating and kind of what the future would be. The adopted plan says knock it down. Uh, the current owners have, have expressed some concerns over being able to do that and not being financially feasible. Uh, of course, unless the city would come with a, a rather sizable check, obviously, and make that happen, which we certainly have, you know, would have to consider. And if we are going to consider that, we need real numbers to really take a look at that. So. Hopefully, does that answer your question, Commissioner Daniels? Yeah, it does. Thank you. I just know we, we, we've been talking about the need for additional housing um, in the area, and I know um, this, as a former downtown renter, uh, uh, renting downtown is very, very desirable, um, but the pricing downtown, um, uh, relatively speaking, is probably not. So just, just think about it as a you know, it has any housing options been looked at, but um, thank you. Yeah, that you did answer my question. Yeah, and specifically, Commissioner Daniels, we are, I think one of the uses being considered for at least part of the second floor would be a residential, would be a residential use. So we are actually asking them to tell us what sort of, you know, window, if we added windows back in, if we need to do pipe, you know, run pipes, what would it need to take things to get things to code, to have multiple residential units on and part of a building like that. So that is, that is absolutely part of the architectural scope we're asking for in terms of those improvements. Well, and I don't, I'm not sure if, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we did the plan for that area, that was before the Shriver building existed. And so we wanted that building down and the grid returned back to a grid but then Schreiber built, and so now those that part of the comprehensive plan is kind of not as, I guess, viable because we're not going to tear down that Schreiber building. We hope not. That would be no. that would be bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's one we definitely want to see. We'd like to see unless the city to wants to come with a sizable check. And I'm pretty I sure can't imagine what that one would be. Yeah, holy smokes. Mm. Yeah, that, <laughs> I think how old like building? I guess it's probably as old as the mall. I mean, I worked there at the Boston store in the early '90s, so. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, it is, you know, it's an interesting prospect in terms of trying to redevelop. Obviously, you know, we talk about big box stores. This is an, ex this is an example of, you know, we're looking for a creative solution maybe to keep it going here. It'd be certainly be much more easier and simpler to do if there was one owner, uh, but there's not one owner. We know there's multiple owners. Uh, so there's certainly some challenges to figuring out except the best option to redevelopment or what's going to happen there. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I think we're, in order before we really proceed on that, we kind of need to know what the actual, we need some real professional opinions on what can actually be done to the building and what some of those actual costs would be related to that for us to really make some evaluations on that. So we'd like to get that done here yet this fall. All right. So reading further down, is that probably why the Adams Street lot RFP got pushed to October from September? That is one of the reasons, yes, sir. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for your report, Neil. I'll enjoy reading mm -hmm. it after the meeting is finished. <laughs> if you have any other questions, please feel free to drop me an email. Happy to do it. So.
Will do. All right, so it looks like the date of the next meeting is September 13th, 2021. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Vice Chair Miller, by Commissioner Bremer. Uh, all, all those in? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we are adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Everyone. Yeah. You got yeah, your mute? <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.